Alright, I think it's working. Cool. So, let me bring up the chats before I forget. So one thing that uh, I guess I get asked a lot that people don't seem to understand um, is uh, paint reduction. And how does it work and how should you reduce paint? What reducer should you use? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just gonna take some reducer today and we're gonna run you through the three different types of reducer there are moment for Createx colors. Um, so the standard reducer at the moment is 4011 reducer. This is the standard reducer to use across all the line of Createx paints. This works for the clear, this works for the illustration colors, this works for the regular line, this works for the wicked line works across the whole line of colors this is the standard reducer that is recommended across all the lines and then there's 4012 um, and it's my understanding they're kind of phasing this out it's not it was uh, it was the reducer before 4011 and uh, I still I still say I like this better uh, but you know it won't be an option pretty soon so yeah you know it's just the old stuff it still works great but you know 4011 is the new stuff then there's 4013 clear I mean reducer um, and 4013 is used in certain states to be compliant with clean air re regulations um, and jurisdictions uh, so depending on where you live the regulations for the reducer are different and for the paint you're spraying so yeah this one is um, flammable it says um, you know so I don't know <laughs> I haven't actually used this but it says right on the label warning danger flammable liquid I haven't actually tried this and I don't have a need to because I live in a state where we don't have to use this. But if you're in one of those states and you work in a paint shop, um, this is probably the stuff you'd be using. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not big on the regulations, but just know it exists. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll put this 4012 and 4011 to the side. Um, again, 4012, it's still available at the moment. It hasn't been phased out yet. Um, but from what I could see on on the Createx, you know, um, technical data sheets and stuff, uh, the, the data sheet for this one is no longer available, so which leads me to believe that it's being phased out and, you know, 4011 is kind of just, you know, taking over. So, <sighs> so for today's exercise, we're going to do Wicked Black. We're going to use Wicked Black for today. We're going to use it with 4011. Now, the interesting thing right here is that it says to thin with 4012, but on the technical data sheets, again, it says to use 4011 with all Createx paints and clears. So, I don't know. You know, I still, like I said, I still like the 4012. I think it works really good. The 4011 also works just as good. Um, it just the flash time is a little different on it. So, but that's what we're gonna use for today. So, I'm zoom you back out a little bit. And what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna use. What's up, Heather? What's up, I Abiz Mayed? Uh, what's up, Kimberly? I'm gonna use the Iwata Revolution. It has a 0.5 millimeter needle. Has a pretty big cup and I'm gonna start off by just doing half and half and right now the pressure is kind of high it's like at 30 psi so we have a little bit high you know, 
but I'm just gonna start with half and half. Oh, there's somebody at the door. I'll be right back.
That's awesome, bro. Awesome timing. <laughs> The lady just dropped off a heap of shirts to get airbrushed, so... Um, anyway. Uh, so, what's up, everybody? Yeah, it's my bad. My bad, I just kind of walked off. Um, Alright, so we got the air pressure, about 30 PSI. We are going to do a half and half, or actually, we're just going to start off with just paint. We're gonna, we're gonna leave this to the side here. Um, and the reason I'm starting off with just paint is because that's how I started when I first started airbrushing. I feel like I should restart it because now there's gonna be this whole section in the beginning where I'm not doing shit. Anyway. So I'm just going to start off with paint, just straight out of the bottle, 30 PSI, and I probably, I filled it about half. Alright, so, <clears throat> on, see I have a paper towel set up here, and then I have a regular piece of paper. Uh, and what I, what I used to do, what I always did, is... There did used to be re reducer for Createx. So back in the day, you, we just shot everything just straight, man. Uh, without reducer, we just kind of just shot it. And it's quite possible to shoot paint without even reducing it. And this is how we used to do on all the shirts and everything like that. And even till today, if you're gonna airbrush on a shirt, you don't reduce the paint. You keep the paint um, unreduced so that you get the max adhesion when you go to press it, right? So the same thing over here, is unreduced paint. You can notice though, when you try to get those fine lines right, really fine, it's a little bit harder. But having the PSI a little higher with a thick paint allows it to spray through just fine. Um, you know, and this is kind of how I would recommend people learn to practice their dragger strokes and your dots and stuff. Just don't reduce your paint, just straight out of the bottle, right? You got to have a good base of where to start with your paint um, before you start trying to mess with it. So I would recommend most people just start straight out of the bottle. And, uh, you know, get yourself a good base of, of what you can do with it. So, all I'm going to do is dump some of this out. Take some out. <clears throat> oh, and before... Before I go reducing this, I'm going to turn the air pressure down to show you guys something. Now it's about 20 PSI. <clears throat> so, Milan, how can I find that tutorial you did on airbrushing lips? Go search for it on YouTube. It's not in the chat. Anyway, I turned the, the, the PSI to, to about 20 PSI. And again, the paint's not reduced, and we're going to try it again. And to be quite honest with you, I, I can achieve dagger strokes, but it's kind of hard. And fine lines, look at that. I can still make fine lines. I want straight out of the bottle 20 psi again you got to work at it a little bit but they do come out and and yeah but anytime you want to like shade shading at 20 psi with unreduced paint it's kind of rough and you get more of a speckle even if you do it over here you can really see 
it really becomes hard to gauge when your airbrush is gonna spray. And if you do little fine lines, how fine can we get it? No, oh, that's too close. See, yeah, it starts, it's gonna start spitting on me because it can't, I can't get that close with it because the paint spreads. So again, just taking off the dry tip real quick. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna leave the pressure low. Now we got we got a little bit of the paint in there. We're gonna do about a half and half mix. All right. We're gonna do about a half and half mix right here. And we're gonna shake it. Now the reason you reduce paint. So adding 4011 reducer, uh, and reading right off the, the data sheet here, it lowers viscosity for improved itemization and flow, it reduces tip dry, and improves drying times and curing of paint. So that's what the flash is, the drying times and curing of the paint. That's kind of what I'm talking about when I say it flashes over, and especially when you're painting on something non-porous. Um, it becomes more and more apparent, right, that something needs to dry. So when it goes from wet to dry, you know, when you, you notice that that wetness look go away, that's the flash. Right? So when you work with unreduced paints, um, they flash over pretty quickly. Uh, but as you add more reducer, depending on how much reducer you add, uh, the flash time can be increased uh, quite a bit. So there's ways to uh, make sure that your flash time doesn't get ridiculous. And that is by making sure you don't um, overspray your paint. So even if you have over reduced paint, you wanna try to avoid um, caking it on because it'll just be wet reducer, right? <sighs> so when you add 4011 to your clears, you really don't want to go past 10% on your clear coats if you're going to use 4050, 4030, any of that stuff. 10% is probably as high as you want to go. <clears throat> and um, the reason for that is again, the flash time becomes really high. So when you start spraying the 4050 with reducer added, um, especially 4050, the gloss, it'll take the, the coating on the on whatever you sprayed a bit longer to dry so between coats you'll have a longer dry time so what's up easy airbrush what's up Stuart what's up Tom also when you're reducing with 4011 or with any of these reducers uh, for optimal plate flow you want to allow about 10 minutes uh, after you reduce and then shake it again um, so what the reducer is going to do is actually break down the surface tension of the water in the paint, right? So even though everything is water-based, um, there's alcohol additives in here. And uh, that's all going to break down the paint. So if you just give it a minute before you start spraying, you'll notice the flow of the paint will become a lot smoother. All right, so now, now at a half and half mixture, 20 PSI, What's up, Dennis? You probably showed up when I wasn't here. <laughs> and, you know, we, again, now we could achieve dagger strokes, but look how fine we could get them and how extended. And fine lines. Finer than what you could probably see on the camera right now. You guys even see that? I don't think you guys can. Uh, that's as zoomed in as it gets. Let's try it over here. So first, let's do some dagger strokes. At half and half, it still sprays on thick paper like this, just perfect, right? So I'm gonna just try to get some nice, nice thin, thin lines. Again, just trying to give the paint a little bit of time to break up in there and let the reducer do its work. So here I'm showing you good methods of using the reducer. 
And that's about as thin as I can get it without it breaking up. You see the breaks? If I try to go any thinner than that, it breaks. It splits. My line splits. Right? Even though over here it's the same line, this line over here is the same. It's it's Over here it's a lot thinner because the paint just kind of goes through. On this side though, getting a nice thin line past the break point, it's not possible. Well, yep, not possible, it breaks. It gets split. Maybe if we gave this more time, let's give it a sec. Let's give it a sec before we pass judgment. <clears throat> so anyway, you can see at half and half, low pressure, you can really get some nice shading, right? Yeah. Shading is beautiful. You can really tell when the airbrush is going to start and it's going to end. Same thing over here. And the flash is so quick, you can touch it right after and it's dry. Alright, now let's try to get it. Let's see if we can get it fine lines. Nope, I get splits or we get spread. So the air pressure is too high and the paint's not reduced enough to get anything finer than that. But before we move on, I'm gonna show you again. This is good. This Everything right here is good. Here, I'm gonna show you one bad thing. So we're gonna take the half and half mix and we're gonna turn the pressure back up. We're back at like 30 PSI. And on a porous surface like this, or on a shirt, this is probably just worked just fine. But it's coming over here that if we wanted to do this. Actually, it's working pretty good. Still can't go any thinner, but you do see the more overspray kind of, and it splits. If I, I pull back, that's gonna split. Um, but that's, I, ha, I like, it's hard for my finger to do that because I have to do it intentional. I Like, I literally have to try to do that. Because once I see, oh, well, I guess. Yeah, really getting those fine lines when you get close. You can really see the splitting a lot more. And that's just because the high pressure and the reduced paint, um, it really doesn't mix. Really, as, as you reduce your paint more, you're going to want to lower the pressure even more. Right? So, again, we're going to open this up and we're going to dump a little bit out. It's about like it's about the, the the bend there of the cup, and we're just gonna add you know another another good squirt. So now our paint's like really really reduced. We're reducing reduced paint, right? We're gonna shake this up. We're gonna lower the pressure back down. Taking the pressure all the way down to like 15 psi, so it's yeah, it's it's going to like it's going to like 12 when I push the button. Okay, so it's really low, and we've reduced the paint right quite a bit.
And yeah, really. Get the dry tip off. Yeah, and even when you get close at 15 psi, overly reduced paint, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to get splattered. Like getting really nice dots. It's easy. Also, do you see how close, like my needle is almost touching that surface. Look at how tiny, tiny those dots are. Something like this though, it's really hard to get splits. But there you guys go. This is kind of what you want to do, right? What I've showed, that's the good way to do it. You would want to make sure as you reduce your paint, lower, lower the pressure. Right, so if you're reducing your paint a lot, a lot, you really want to lower that pressure. And it really makes it easier to just get those really fine lines. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dump all this out. We're not gonna mess with the air pressure anymore. We're gonna dump all that out. I'm gonna kind of clean it out. Here's the thing, I'm going to take 4011, I'm going to fill, fill it up to the bend of the bowl, I'm going to take some wicked black, all right. and all we're going to do is just do one drop, one good drop. Now, you really wouldn't want to do this on, say, something that's going to be in the sun or something like that, but for artwork, uh, this is a very, very good trick for producing, like, extremely fine lines. If you want the finest of fine, if you believe you're up to the task, At this point, it's just gonna look like you're spraying like a gray, right? So if you want to shade, doing like I did, it gives you a really nice shade. And actually, for extending those other tones, it'll work just perfect. See, you can extend that stuff. But then when it comes to making lines, based on your skill here, Get those fine like hairline I don't even can you guys even see that I don't think you guys can see that Let's see here. you 
you guys can barely see those lines. See those lines? And this is all done, again, we using an Iwata Revolution for this um, with a 0.5 millimeter needle. Um, so when it comes to paint reduction, there's a lot of stuff you can achieve um, without having to switch off to a new airbrush or get yourself different equipment. Um, just based on on paint right if you've got your paint in your airflow um, kind of correct and in the right zone um, then you can produce stuff that's kind of a little bit out of what people would consider the league of that airbrush right so again what what most people would consider a beginner airbrush uh, but you could take this airbrush and, and take it and produce pretty much whatever you want with it granted you have some <laughs> enough 4011 uh, to match with what you're painting um, your paints obviously uh, and skill with enough practice and you know know-how you can get there without having to uh, paint everything in a black right so a lot of uh, like on the discord some of the paintings I see are, are really dark or the colors are overly saturated and if you want to achieve some of these like gray tones even if you don't want to switch off the black right you could use your airbrush for that like your reducer should help with all those tones all those you know different shades and shadows in there and you can build it up, you know, as you're spraying, it's drying because real reducer dries quickly. You know, if you're, if you're using water or something, I can't really speak to that, but if you're using reducer, it dries quickly. And you could keep working and layering it in. So if you watched me paint those Aztec paintings, and you saw when I was painting with the white, it would get really bright and then after, um, you know, it would uh, it would kind of dull down, and then I would go back and build it up more, right? So that's kind of what I was doing. I was working with a really reduced white, and then building up as I went. So even if I made a mistake, such as Air Todd <laughs> was like, "You'll never admit it." It was like, "No, I'll make mistakes, but then it's really easy to correct them because they're in such a gray tone that you know they're they're really easy to go over." Um, and and yeah. So, I don't know, hopefully that helps you guys out. You know, it, it's, it's uh, to me it's, it's pretty basic, but again, I've been doing this for so long that I forget that people have troubles, and I had troubles um, doing this when I first started. And most of my paint reduction uh, techniques come from actually painting with uh, polyurethane paints. So I just applied the same method of automotive reduction that I would use for polyurethane paints um, to paint on automotive uh, or motorcycles really is what we were doing. Um, you know, that's what we would use. And so then when Createx brought out their reducers and stuff, I really wanted to take it, take a, a look at them and then it turns out they're really good and then the Createx colors last. Uh, even on automotive, um, it really made me switch. But all I did was use the same techniques again from reducing polyurethane paints to reducing these, and it worked out great so far. It's it's been pretty good. The only switch I guess recently has been to 4011. I was really used to the 4012, and I really like the way the 4012 flashes over a lot quicker. Um, you know, the Wicked colors. I mean, they've been out for for I mean 10 years now they've been out for a while you know but back in the day there, there was no wicked colors you know it was only the the createx paints and I painted mainly on shirts so we didn't use reducers everything was just shot straight out of the bottle and again for shirts you know you can shoot createx right out of the bottle that's what I would recommend um, so yeah I hope that help you, helps you guys out. Sorry I was gone in the beginning of the video. The lady dropped off a bunch of shirts for me uh, to paint, so.
so yeah, I, I I don't know what else to say. If you have a question, if you have some kind of uh, something that wasn't explained, you know, I think I've I think I've broken it down pretty good. If you're gonna reduce your paints, I recommend lowering your air pressure. You don't need to run as much air pressure because then you'll get a bunch of splitting like these, and that's not good. Um, overly reduced paints with air pre high pressure too will produce more uh, overspray, so you'll get more of a gray or, or shadowy kind of effect around your stuff, which really makes everything look muddy and dirty. And you don't want that either. Um, it's possible to spray paint straight out of the bottle uh, if you have your pressure, you know, above 30 psi, 35 psi. You can shoot and get all the detail. You can make fine lines and everything uh, straight out of the bottle. All these right here were straight out of the bottle. Reduce it half and half gives you pretty good control. Um, Createx rec recommends about five to ten percent. <laughs> I, I like fifty percent for artwork. Again, for artwork, uh, fifty percent is about right. Um, for me, that's that's kind of where I like it, where it sprays um, pretty good. And then anything more than that is just kind of depending on how much detail I plan to put into that picture. So, yeah. Right on, Todd. Cool. So, I'll get out of your guys' hair. Hopefully, you guys catch this uh, later on. I had to just do something quick today. Um... But I know this this is a big question and in my comments and stuff so we'll catch you guys next time thank you guys all for tuning in <laughs> I think I was gone longer longer than I talked but you know and also just know that this can be done with all the colors right so if you can use blue red whatever color you want and you want to be able to create those tones with it so if you want to create a painting in like sepia tone you could reduce you know just uh you know a little bit of red add one little drop of black or something give it that nice tone and then you could create like all these shades um with one you know one little mixture of paint you don't have to keep mixing up different colors and you know all that so also a pro tip there at the end. Hope you guys caught that. We'll see you guys next time. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be live tomorrow. But uh, on Saturday, I'll probably be live. Uh, we're going to do a how to airbrush stream. right? So this is paint reduction. And then on Saturday, we'll do a how to airbrush stream. And I'll try to use some of this paint reduction techniques on that stream. So you guys kind of have a little bit of a... An idea of how to apply this uh, what I explained today there on Saturday um, and then that'll be the last live stream indoors and then I probably won't be back until Tuesday or Wednesday um, there might be a video goes live there in between somewhere um, but I won't be back till next week after that uh, as we finish up the garage uh, Everything shows up on Monday. We get that all finished, and I gotta paint it and set it up. Fun times. So, thank you guys all for tuning in. See y'all later.